we will stand up again, we will march again, we will preach again, we will organize again. We are black, we are white, we are Latino, we are Native American, we are Democrat, we are Republican, we are independent, we are people of faith, we are people not of faith, we are natives and immigrants, we are business leaders and workers and unemployed, we are doctors and the uninsured, we are gay, we are straight, we are students, we are parents, we are retirees. We are North Carolina, and we're here, and we ain't going nowhere. Hello, my brothers and sisters. Let me uh, mention a couple things we face right now in this state that folks across this yard never think about. They don't want us to think about them either. First, not only do 18% of North Carolinians live in poverty, but despite all the happy talk, over a third of our families this afternoon don't make a living wage. And they are disproportionately black, Latino, and Native American. And they know that you cannot survive on 725. Second, not only are 25% of our kids poor, and 40% of our children of color, four of 10, think of that. But we have the second highest percentage of hungry children in the United States, just behind Louisiana. This powerful and wealthy state, second highest number of hungry babies. Can you imagine being governor of the state with the second highest number of hungry babies and never even thinking about it? What in the hell does it take to become important. Third, not only are decent living wage jobs hard to come by in the triad, but according to the federal government, Greensboro, North Carolina is the second hungriest city in America. Yes, sir. So what do Senator Berger of Guilford County, what steps does he take? He votes last year to cut North Carolina's meager allocation to food banks in half. Fourth, not only does Charlotte have dramatically growing pockets of concentrated poverty, exploding poverty among citizens of color, but Harvard just released a study finding that Charlotte has the worst economic mobility in the United States. If you are born poor in Charlotte, you are more apt to stay that way than anywhere else in the country. If you're born poor in Charlotte, Harvard recommends that you move. So what did the Mecklenburg County Trio do? McCrory, Tillis, and Rucho. They create a massive tax cut for the rich and they abolish the earned income tax credit for the poor. Shame. Because they occupy an alternative universe in which the only thing wrong with North Carolina is those at the bottom have too much and those at the top don't have enough. These are mortal sins against the people of North Carolina. Yes, sins against our history, sins against our promise, sins against our constitutions, sins against our religions, and they are fireable offenses. Amen. When I was a teenager, it's hard to believe this, but I used to act out a little bit, and my old man who could be tough would look me square in the eye and he'd say, boy, there are some things we don't tolerate around here. That's what this powerful Moral Monday movement is saying. There are some things we won't tolerate here. Yeah. Not in North Carolina, not here, not now, not ever. Forward together, not one step back. Yeah.